the four southwestern countries of Côte d'Ivoire, Ghana, Nigeria, and Cameroon produce about 70% of the world cocoa bean. That is a lot. So in this video, I want to talk about how Africa became the highest producer of cocoa bean in the world. If you're watching me for the first time, my name is Adesanya Ayeni, and on this channel, I do educative and informative Africa content. If this channel is something you'd be interested in, please do consider subscribing to my channel. Okay, so let's talk about how Africa became the highest producer of cocoa bean in the world. The actual cocoa bean is not native to Africa. So where did it come from? So it come from the South America. So the Mesoamerican culture of, you know, Maya and Aztec and a lot of other ones, they've been enjoying and experiencing, you know, cocoa drink and cocoa for thousands of years. Okay, so, and, you know, cocoa, one of the major uh, products that come from cocoa is chocolate and chocolate is loved all over the world. Okay, so when the Spanish people arrived in South America, so and they discovered that, you know, this culture, but you know, the Aztec and Maya and all this Mesoamerican culture, they discovered that, oh, they've been really enjoying this particular drink, whether they use it for ritual or spiritual or kind of like um, whatever the various way they do enjoy this drink. And they found out that mm, this drink is actually really well, this plant is actually really good. And then they try to um, kind of like enjoy it with them as well. And they took it to Europe. Why they took it to Europe? Obviously, I mean, this is a kind of like plant that it needs a particular um, climate, it needs a particular weather or a particular soil or a particular, you know, climate for it to be able to, uh, to, to be able to grow, basically. So it wasn't really going to succeed in Europe. So they kind of like enjoying it, you know, taking it from, you know, South America. And then when the Portuguese, the Portuguese were the first to arrive in Africa. When the Portuguese arrived in Africa, you know, and then they arrived first in, you know, this kind of like highland here, Sao Tome and Principe Island there, and also um, the this island of Equatoria, uh, Guinea, uh, called uh, Bioku, um, also called uh, Fernando, um, Island of Fernando, so which is like a Spanish island. And then this one is uh, for uh, the Portuguese. So the Portuguese, they were the one that took, uh, that first took, um, you know, cocoa seed to Africa. So they took cocoa seed from South America to Africa, to the um, uh, to the Satome and Principe Highland, and they had a plantation there on the highland. So how did they, how did cocoa bean, how did they get to other part of Africa? And then you have, um, you know, this particular man called Tete Kwashi. He's a Ghanaian man. He was the one from this island of Bioku, uh, the Kutera uh, Guinea Highland, where there was plantation, and then they had a lot of um, um, a lot of people walking on that um, highland, and then they took. So Tete Kwashi took cocoa bean, cocoa seed pod, or whatever. He took it to Ghana, and then that's how Ghana first experienced uh, cocoa bean. So, and obviously the Ghana um, people, um, well, in terms of like the government and people in 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 authority, they kind of like support. They support um, you know farmers to plant. Um, to plant cocoa and also a lot of other community at the time like um, um, uh, palm oil and a lot of other community were kind of like becoming less popular compared to cocoa and farmers were making more money uh, from cocoa uh, compared to other community and then it became really popular and obviously in uh, Côte d'Ivoire as, well, as well, well, Côte d'Ivoire and Ghana are the, kind of like the biggest uh, kind of like producer of cocoa bean. So the crew people in Côte d'Ivoire, they were the first to actually plant, uh, to have the uh, plantation, cocoa plantation in Côte d'Ivoire. And then you have uh, Nigeria where Christian missionaries, uh, missions and um, a family, a particular family called Coca family, they were the first to actually plant 
um, to have cocoa plantation in Nigeria and in Cameroon, uh, Douala, um, Elite, they are the one that kind of like uh, have um, the first to to plant cocoa, um, plant to have cocoa plantation in Cameroon. And it's very, very important to actually mention that you know the the, the European we can give them a lot of credit and thank them and be grateful to them for bringing cocoa um, to Africa. But we know that you know if cocoa was going to succeed in Europe, if uh, the Europe um, weather and climate and soil was suitable for cocoa, they would have actually had it uh, planted in 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 cocoa um, in in Europe. And then we know that at the time as well, it was that period of. Um, slavery or slavery was being uh, what about to be abolished and all of that and then we know that they took the opportunity of the manpower in africa because they planted in that they had the plantation in those islands and then they bring people from the mainland africa into those islands to help to be able to cultivate those uh, plantations so yeah so what the point i'm actually making is that the father you know they they, they it was um they brought it to africa for their own benefit really so but nowadays now after slavery abolition and all of that so it's not to the benefit of people of africa in terms of like and then obviously from um from god uh, from these two islands that's that was where the cocoa bean then end up to get to other parts of Africa because it's not only these four countries that actually do cocoa, that plant cocoa, um, that have cocoa plantation. There are places like Madagascar as well, another part of Africa that plant, uh, that have cocoa plantation. Yeah, so, and something I actually thought about as well is in terms of like, you know, the benefits of, you know, all this money that, we, that is coming from this cocoa, um, you know what the benefit who is benefiting from this really are people of africa benefiting from this because when you get to like this um kind of like this uh, south Tome and principe island as well you see have um there was a time when the the cocoa plantation um kind of like stopped and then they had coffee and uh, some other things and then later on they started again but what i'm actually saying is that the wealth that come from these resources this cocoa is it really actually benefiting uh, people of this country? And this is the reason why you had um, a video that came viral, uh, that became viral not too long ago of um, Ghana president who was talking to the Swiss president and saying, actually, we want manufacture, uh, we want factories in Ghana to be producing, um, to be kind of like processing this cocoa bean and, you know, possibly like one of the major uh, product that come from cocoa bean which chocolates maybe chocolate should be made well there are factories that make chocolate in africa but you can't really actually compare the number of how much they are producing compared to what the factories in europe are producing so basically the ghana president saying we want to be all these jobs that is coming from the factory that are manufacturing the chocolate we want those jobs to go to people in ghana and then the same should be applicable to all the African countries that are producing chocolate as well. They should be having um, bean to bar. They should be having, you know, this chocolate to be produced to be produced in Africa and possibly maybe you know send them to um, to other parts of the world. I mean, rather than taking the raw materials away and then you know all those jobs going to all those countries and also sometimes we even buy some chocolate from abroad to africa which almost like similar to what nigeria does like you have your crude oil you send it to be refined somewhere else and then you buy it back which is like you know you're losing money you're losing um jobs you're losing all the growth that's supposed to be going to the economy yeah anyway what do you think about this video um yeah i hope somebody find this video useful and I'm actually going to put a link to um, where well, I'm actually going to play the video of um, President of Ghana talking to the Swiss president at the end of this video. And if you are watching for the first time and you haven't subscribed already, please do consider subscribing to my channel and um, click on the like button as well. Show me some love if you like this video. And uh, thanks for watching and uh, God bless. Welcome to Candid Africa, truthful and unapologetic. It is quite simple. 
We need the raw materials and you have the raw materials. However, as I have stated on occasion, Ghana no longer wants to be dependent on the production and export of raw materials, including cocoa beans. We intend to process more and more of our cocoa in our country with the aim of producing more chocolate ourselves because we believe that there can be no future prosperity for the Ghanaian people in the short, medium, or long term if we continue to maintain economic structures that are dependent on the production and export of raw materials. We intend to va add value to our raw materials, industrialize, and enhance agricultural productivity. This is the best way we can put Ghana at the high end of the value chain in the global marketplace and create jobs for the teeming masses of Ghanaians. It is for this reason that my government continues to put in place a number of measures aimed at attracting investment into Ghana as well as stimulating growth of the private sector. We have succeeded over the last three years in ensuring that all our macroeconomic indices are pointing in the right direction cut our fiscal deficit, introduce a monetary policy that is stabilizing the currency and reducing significantly the cost of borrowing, and have introduced a raft of tax cuts which are bringing relief to and encouraging businesses. These interventions have led to Ghana recording an annual GDP average growth rate of 7% since 2017, making us consistently one of the world's fastest growing economies during the period. We have one of the most business friendly economies in Africa, evidenced in our status as the largest recipient of foreign direct investment in West Africa. Ghana has also been selected to host the Secretariat of the African Continental Free Trade Area, a market of some 1.2 billion people with a combined GDP of US 3 trillion American dollars. It is the world's largest free trade area since the formation of the World Trade Organization. Our goal is to make Ghana the hub of trade in Africa, and thus serving notice on Swiss investors to take advantage of the growing business-friendly climate in Ghana and of our unique position as host of the AFCFTA Secretariat to set up joint venture enterprises in our country and thereby access this huge market that the free trade area presents. Did you like or hate what you heard? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want more candid speeches like this, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to catch all our latest videos. And please feel free to leave your suggestions, news tips, or topics about Africa you'd like us to cover.